welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, Astro Ventures. It's the month of December, and uh, we've got a long list of targets this month. So without further ado, let's get into this immediately. So here we go. Uh, search. Let's take a look. We're going to jump to M33 right off the bat, and that is the Triangulum Nebula. There we go. Let's zoom in on this. Uh, this target's second biggest galaxy in our night sky to image. You're going to want to shoot this one at 500 millimeters, and with that said, remember any focal lengths I give, that's operating off of a crop sensor camera, so adjust, but I figure a lot of people are using it for that extra reach. So 500 millimeter. This one, um, not exactly a hard target to shoot, but the processing can be hard because um, out here, it's just, um, it doesn't, uh, or... Trying to edit it, it sometimes people feel it's a little messy. It's just not so organized as you put it together. It just looks the way it looks, you know, is what it is. Uh, going from there, let's jump over to M31. And I'm sure you recognize M31, and that would be the Andromeda Galaxy. This one here, yep, this is tried true, biggest one out there and a lot of us have shot this one it's a great beginner target but even us experienced people love to keep coming back to it so m31 andromeda this one here 300 millimeters max and uh you know it's nice it's bright it's an easy target so it's a great one you can even see this one from uh city locations uh, moving there or moving on from there we're going to take a look at ic 18 Zero 05 and this would be the heart nebula this one here you're going to want to shoot this one at 300 millimeters maximum uh, with that you also have the fish head nebula this is a great one it is a um, hydrogen alpha emission nebula but the reds are strong enough that you won't need to have a astromodded camera to pick this one up just because the reds are that strong. And then going from there over to its neighbor, and that would be IC1848. And that jumps us over to the Sol Nebula. Again, this one here, not well, not quite as strong as the heart. This one is still easily capturable with a stock camera. Uh, combined to shoot both of these and really fill the frame, if you do this at 200 millimeters, that will capture both. Uh, my suggestion on the heart with the fish head is 300 millimeters for specifically this target. And then uh, if you want to fill to you fill the frame to about the same amount for the sole, go to a 400, but 200 oriented in a long rectangular uh, positioning with your camera will fit both of these in and fill the frame. So those are great targets there, both of them capturable with a stock camera, although there is some advantage to pick up some of the fainter stuff with the uh, astro-mounted camera. Moving on next, we're going to go to NGC 281. And this is the Pac-Man Nebula, and you're going to want 500 millimeters plus on this one. Astromod definitely helps. It's not a very big target. The greater the focal length that you can pull off, the better, and the more hours, the better. Uh, you're also going to want to have you know, your, uh, your lens sitting at uh, its best optical position. And what I mean is my Generation 1 Tamron lens, although it goes out to 600 millimeters, beyond 500, it gets soft. So know your lens, know where it's best to shoot, and uh, go for this one, 500 millimeters plus, again, working off of a crop sensor. Uh, going from there, let's jump over to NGC 7822. And sorry, I'm going so fast, this list is long. Okay, this one here would be a, um, the cosmic question mark. And this one is definitely going to lend itself towards the astro-mounted cameras. It is a darker cloud. And uh, with this one, 
You're going to want to shoot this one anywhere from 250 to 500 millimeters, depending on how you want to frame this up and how much you want to, you know, capture of it. If you really want to zoom in there and get into the uh, nebulosity, you could do so, or you could back out to try and capture more of it. So sometimes I like to get right in and just absolutely fill the frame with what's there. So. Um, I've shot it in both directions, or both focal lengths, wide and super zoomed in. Okay, moving on from there, let's head over to, let's see here, M78. M78, uh, this one here is Casper the Friendly Ghost. And uh, it is in the Orion Nebula. And Casper here, you're gonna want a 500 plus uh, focal length. And then right next to it, there is this other nebula here, NGC 2071. And these are both great. Uh, although small targets, you're gonna want that focal length. And again, you're gonna wanna shoot with your lens at its best optical focal length. So like, a, like I said, for myself, knowing my lens, I'm not going to want to go beyond 500. Uh, let's see here. Next, I want to jump over to, let's see here, M45, Pleiades. And with Pleiades, again, great beginner target. You can see this one from the city, 300 millimeters. Now, one of the great things is with as little as an hour on this target, you can capture a, a beautiful image. However, the more hours you get and the darker the skies that you're shooting, you'll start to get more and more of this fainter dust. And Pleiades gets bigger and bigger the more hours that you have with more of that fainter dust showing up. So I absolutely recommend this one. Uh, and again, even though it's uh, an awesome beginner's target, many of us uh, experienced people will still come back to it because it's just a gorgeous target to shoot. And then uh, next we're gonna move on to NGC 1499. And this would be the California Nebula, not too far out from Pleiades. Nice big red patch up here, hydrogen alpha. Uh, Astro modded works very well. However, you can capture this one with a stock camera as well. And then uh, with this one, looking at about 200 millimeters, and you'll want to orient the camera for you know to run in the the length of the uh, the cl gas cloud itself. So there you go, California Nebula. Now uh, let's jump over to let's see here. Where do I want to go? Let's jump over to M42. Let's see, M42. Okay, Orion. Now, you don't want to start shooting first thing in the night and give it a few hours to get higher up, but of course, the Orion Nebula. And again, this is another great target, easily visible, even in the city to the naked eye, but uh, awesome beginner's target. There's so much color, so much intensity, although a challenge because the center can be particularly bright. With this target, the more hours you get on it, the more of this faint nebulosity that you get out here. And um, I like to suggest this one at 300 millimeters. If you're going for just the Orion Nebula and the Running Man, the Running Man being NGC 1977, typically these two are shot together as a pair. But this is an awesome target for both beginners as well as uh, us experienced people that go back and we just want to see how much more we can pull out of it. Okay, next, let's jump over to, let's see here, NGC uh, 2024. There we go. And that would be the flame. And then right next to it, we also have IC. 434, which is the horse head. These two, again, are typically commonly shot together. This one, 400 millimeters, and with the proper orienting of the camera framing, will create an absolutely um, gorgeous image with 
the image filling the frame. And you can shoot this with an Astro modded, which really helps to bring out a lot of the red nebulosity in here. However, these targets are strong enough that you can shoot these with a stock camera. So no worries there, but uh, this is absolutely gorgeous to go after. Now, next, and this is my hope and my uh, dream to capture this year is let's take a look at Bernard's loop and we're going to go ahead and back out. Okay. Now in Bernard's loop, and actually I'm going to change screens for a second. Let's jump over here. Okay. Using this image, uh, <clears throat> for Bernard's loop, for Bernard's Loop, I'm going to suggest a 35 to 50 millimeter lens. Uh, 35, I think, works really well. 50 uh, feels a little bit too tight. But what I'm after in suggesting 35, so here is the Orion Nebula. Here is the flame and the horse head. Over here, we have the witch head, to which I will be talking about in a moment. And then we have the stars of Orion's belt here. And then this is Bernard's loop. This is a hydrogen alpha ring. And then up above, we have this giant cloud of hydrogen alpha as well. If you shoot with a 35 millimeter, you can capture all of this. Now, here's the challenges. Um, I suggest shooting this and uh, shooting one with keeping in mind the bright intensity of the Orion Nebula so that at this focal length you can capture some imaging to not blow out the center of it and then some additional frames with longer exposure to capture all this hydrogen alpha which will cause a blowout here so you're going to have to layer the two as well as you're going to need that long exposure for the Bernards in this uh, cloud up here to be able to also capture the witch head over here and create something like this. This is definitely a more advanced uh, editing process and layering, but you know, if you can pull it off, this is absolutely a gorgeous image to capture. 50 millimeters is super tight. 35 millimeters gives you a little bit more wiggle room. And the more exposure time you have, the more you're going to pick up the various um, you know, cloud extensions that are out there of some of the, the dust lanes that run further out. So you really want to consider getting into this one here. Okay, next, let's see here. Uh, NGC 1909. Let's see, 1909. Forgot the NGC. There we go. The Witch Head. This one is particularly faint. It is off of the star Rigel from Orion. And this is, whoops, this is a great target, rewarding to capture, but it can be hard. And it does take a bit of work to edit and process and pull the witch head out. But it's a nice large target and you can shoot this one at 200 millimeters. And then with that, to close this one out, because it's already been such a long video, what I want to suggest to you is the Geminids Meteor Shower is going to be going. And let's see here. Let's jump over to where that is. So here's the Geminids off of Gemini. It is rising through the night. And with these ones, the um, it started back on November 19th. It goes until December 24th. But the peak this year is expected to be around December 14th with about 100 per hour. Uh, the nice thing about the Geminids meteor shower is that the uh, asteroids, the meteor shower, the meteors coming in are a bright white, so they pop nicely. And so this could be a great one. And with shooting, because of where it's located, if you were to shoot super wide and do a bit of uh, layering on things, you could capture some of these different nebulas and things that are out here and then layer in the meteors that come in from the Geminids. So anywhere in this direction, you'll get the, uh, the meteor showers coming in. So um, there you go. There was no shortage of targets. There is a lot going on this month. And again, because night starts so early and it lasts so late, you know, you got nearly 12 hours of uh, imaging time out there. So I really suggest jumping out there and getting those. And uh, 
yeah, have at it. Now, we would love to see you over at our Facebook group, Astro Venture DSLR, and love to see the images that you capture there. And if you like the uh, videos that we're doing here at Astro Venture, consider liking, subscribing, and ringing the bell and following us here on uh, YouTube. Until next time, guys, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.